until I was an adult. But knowing what I know now, it is something that I've battled since I was a young kid. After so much mental suffering throughout most of my life, it was a gift. First, to identify my issue as OCD. Once I was diagnosed, my journey to becoming a highly functioning, productive person could begin. I've learned that we have to accept that we are not in control of the planet and what happens around us, but still have to thrive and push through because life is precious. We have to change the conversation and destigmatize mental health because people need to know they are not alone and there are resources out there to help. That is a quote from Howie Mandel in an interview. He is a famous comedian who also suffers from OCD. And although his type revolves specifically around germs, there is still so much more to learn about the disorder. So obsessive compulsive disorder is a neurological anxiety rooted disorder and which called or OCD for short, and it causes stress for the person who has it and also interferes with daily activities. And according to Patrick B. McGrath, who has a PhD and is a chief clinical officer at NoCD, which is a specific therapist website that deals with OCD treatment and therapy, OCD affects one out of 40 people worldwide, so it's pretty common. And the intrusive thoughts that come with OCD are egodystonic, which means that they don't actually align with a person's values and desires. And the exact cause, and accor or according to the National Institute of Mental Health, as of September of 2022, the exact cause of OCD is still unknown, but there are different fields of research that professionals are still studying in. So for genetics, 25% of people with OCD actually have a close relative or a close family member who also has the same disorder. And according to brain imaging studies in biology, there is a difference in the frontal cortex of a brain of someone who has OCD compared to somebody who doesn't have OCD. And there's also connections bet between childhood trauma and OCD, and also children who have had anxiety and depression have a chance of getting OCD when they get older as well. And there's also different types of obsessive or OCD symptoms. And according to myoclinic.org, it varies from person to person. So there are obsessive symptoms and compulsive symptoms. And someone with OCD can have either or, or they can have both. And the obsessive symptoms are specifically the repetitive and intrusive thoughts that come into a person's mind. And examples of that would be doubting that the that door is locked, having unpleasant sexual images, or having thoughts about acting inappropriately in public. And then there's the compulsive symptoms, which are the actual ritualistic behavioral acts that somebody would do to try to ease their anxiety, but however, it only eases the anxiety temporarily. And the specific examples of that are actually checking the door to make sure it's locked repeatedly, saying a word or phrase or even a prayer repeatedly, and even counting in a certain pattern. And there's actually one specific OCD symptom that not everybody with OCD has, but it is shown as some. And they're actually known as tick-like symptoms. And read the bold print. It's not the same as Tourette's syndrome tics. Completely different thing. Because unlike Tourette's syndrome tics that are more uncontrollable, with these tick-like symptoms in OCD, like all the other symptoms, they can be controlled and treated with therapy and treatment. And there's also different subtypes of OCD. So there's harm OCD, which are intrusive thoughts of, about hurting yourself or others. And there's also health concern OCD, which are the fears of being contaminated, or intrusive thoughts about the fears of being contaminated, which is pretty much close to what Howie Mandel suffers with. And then there's also pure OCD, which is actually the rarest type of OCD out there. And according to a book called Pure o OCD, Letting Go of Obsessive Thoughts with Acceptance and Commitment Therapy. It was written by someone named Chad, and I could not pronounce his last name, so I'm just gonna call him Chad. And he has a PhD, and according to him in this book, when a person has obsessions, but the, compulsive, but the compulsions or rituals of OCD are not readily apparent. So the intrusive thoughts are there, but the visible compulsions are not there. And then there's re relationship OCD, which are doubtful thoughts about the uncertainty of a relationship. And then there's also religious OCD, which is also called scrupulosity. And according to Scrupulosity Solutions, which is a therapist blog owned by Jamie Eckert, who is a therapist that specializes in religious OCD, and I quote again, it is a mental hijacking of your faith experience. So it's fears about 
So it's fears about the about violating a religious belief. And and actually 33 or 60% of people with OCD actually have religious obsessions and compulsions. And I actually want to touch more, more light on this a specific type because I actually relate to this a lot more than the other ones. So there are four factors that make up scroll velocity. There are cynical doubts, which are feelings of uncertainty in the religious practice. There is false guilt, which is intense feelings of guilt that seem reasonable and justified, but it's not actually real guilt. And then there's compulsive religious behaviors, which are behaviors that revolve around fear, doom, obligation, and anxiety. And then there's the classic symptom of intrusive thoughts, which are unwanted thoughts that pop into the mind uninvited. And there's also different improvement factors as well that someone with religious OCD can depend on. There is the quality of the healthcare provider, the frequency of therapy sessions, and also the type of therapy sessions. And then there's also personal dedication and effort. And then there's also environmental stressors and, of course, family support. So my personal experience with religious OCD specifically, I'll make this as short as I can. <laughs> but so 2020, I don't need to say it. We all know what happened, right? We all remember? <laughs> a lot of stuff happened for me during that year, and I was at my lowest point, and my mental health was no exception. And what I thought was plain anxiety in the past turned into full-blown, more OCD-like symptoms. And the reason why I say symptoms is because I'm not officially diagnosed, but I believe it's what I have from personal research. And they were relig specifically religious-themed thoughts. And the reason why I thought it was strange was because, first of all, I didn't, back then, I didn't practice anything in my faith. I've always believed in God. My parents have always taught me good things about God, so I have nothing against him. And for some reason, I was having these thoughts despite me not doing anything or thinking or feeling anything bad from God or no, nothing bad. Like, I was like, oh, what, came, what the heck, brain? Why are you doing this to me? <laughs> and, and however, Although now I'm not completely heal healed from them yet, I still gotta be patient, and I'm still definitely going through a change, for sure, but I can pretty much bet my hand for this. I definitely feel 10 times better than how I was three years ago. And I, and I still have intrusive thoughts every single, every single day, and sometimes even compulsions a lot of the time, but like I said before, I cannot give up. And there's also different types of different types of therapy as well. So there's exposure and response therapy, acceptance and commitment therapy, and the medication is for more severe cases of OCD, but there's also SSRI antidepressants for that. Where are you? Darn it. Uh, oh well. But then but this quote from from Howie Mandel, which I would use to conclude this. OCD comes in many forms and is often misdiagnosed. I've been living with OCD and it, it went severe my anxiety my entire life and it's like living a nightmare. But there are ways to cope and manage. You are not alone. Seek support and help from professionals. There are so many people who are misdiagnosed. So take the important steps to get help, find, find community and treatment so you can thrive and live. Thank you. <laughs>